Good to see you. Great to see you. All the way from the Bay Area. Um, so uh, we're going to be talking about a bunch of different things, um, but I wanted to start quickly with, with uh, your story, and then we'll talk about Health Tap, and then we'll talk about data at Health Tap. So uh, this is not your your first company. So uh, tell us about what you did before and the the founding story of Health Tap. Sure. Uh, try to keep it brief. Uh, so been an entrepreneur my entire life. I think that uh, you know, I think I'm very proud of is that I only worked for a company that I either started or uh, acquired my company eventually. Uh, and uh, so um, that's the only thing I know how to do. Uh, and, uh, you know, started my, uh, my current journey at uh, Stanford University with basically uh, looking into uh, something that was very exciting to me and, and apropos what we talked before uh, that Alex uh, just uh, introduced, which I thought was awesome, by the way, uh, looking into personalized medicine. And uh, particularly, you know, look, looked at some very interesting therapeutics and opportunities, and we're talking more than 10 years, I mean, 12 years ago now, uh, and, and, and really got excited about uh, one particular challenge that we identified as something that is uh, uniform, not only across things that are related to uh, genomics and genetics, but uh, that are related to actually treating anything, right? That what we realized is that it doesn't matter what the intervention was. Uh, more than 50% of people that get a certain treatment or a certain medication, whatever it is, actually don't take it. And that has nothing to do with the cost, right? So adherence is, is probably one of the biggest problems in healthcare across all treatment, doesn't matter what they are, personalized or not. So we thought that that's a huge opportunity, actually. And so this whole notion of engagement and adherence around health and well-being became really, really exciting to me personally. Uh, and from there, basically, you know, we, uh, we started going very deep into that and trying to figure out whether we can build technology uh, in order to engage people around their health and well-being. And back then, you know, it was more like this kind of funny analog phones that had, you know, text messages and like the websites that, uh, that we could, it's kind of like funny to look at some of the solutions that we created back then. But the premise was, can we use technology to engage people more around their health and well-being, regardless of where they are on the continuum of health? Uh, and, and we were very, very fortunate because the university looked into what we're doing and, and gave us a huge opportunity. So John Echemendi, who was the Stanford provost, was amazing and, and really gave us an opportunity uh, to take what we've learned and deploy it to 30,000 staff, faculty, and students and really engage the population around health and well-being using technology. And that was you know, the first significant thing I did. Uh, lucky enough that it worked and, and, and really like, you know, the Be Well at Stanford, which is a program that's doing really well right now, is still going strong today and gave us an opportunity to learn how to engage people around their health and well-being and start applying it in, in, in much larger populations, learn about the importance of technology, but also the importance of uh, understanding and knowledge and content and information. Uh, which when I graduated, I decided to go deeper into that and understanding how people consume information and how can we can use information in order to, to engage people more about their health and well-being. And Health Up was created on the premise of like, what can we do if we really want to get people to be healthier and happier using technology? Is there a way to make it in a very efficient way uh, using mobile devices uh, in a way that were not just possible before? So, so, so what's Health Tap now? What, what's, uh, what does it do? Sure, Health Up is, is very simple. It's, it's uh, the first ever end-to-end uh, -end experience in, in healthcare. So from the moment you're not feeling great, all the way to the moment you're feeling good, you can use Health Up like as a health utility, right? You come to Health Up, you have a question. We have a network of more than 66,000 physicians, uh, US licensed physicians in good standing, and you can ask any health question and get an answer from a doctor in seconds or in minutes. Uh, you can use our repository. We serve more than 2.6 billion doctor answers to date. So it's a very extensive repository and a lot of data about what people actually find valuable, but not only what doctors answered to people before, but actually doctors peer review each other for quality. Right? So every answer that is given to people on Health Tab goes back to the doctors that either agree with the answer or if they disagree, they add a comment or they add their own answer. So the database is the world's most ex extensive database of doctor knowledge that is organized by how people ask questions. And beyond that, as we start getting a lot of engagement, we start getting more and more doctors, which basically gave them the opportunity to create tips, uh, to review news online, and as of recent, to actually rate apps. You know, there are more than 100,000 health apps on, uh, on Google Play and on, in the App Store of Apple, and we wanted doctors to weigh in of what's you know, medically valid and viable 
uh, and, and basically their rating apps as well. So you can actually ask these doctors a question. You can read the content that they either wrote or the reviews that they created. You can connect with doctors 24-7 from any mobile device or web connection. That's our premium service. You can have a conversation with them on text, on video, or on voice. And, and they can actually, when appropriate, they can uh, actually provide advice. They can prescribe medications. We're connected to all the pharmacies in the country. So if the doctor deems it appropriate, he will prescribe a medication and it will wait for you in your local pharmacy five minutes after the consultation is done. And the last thing that we're doing is engagement. Because back to my research at Stanford, you know, if we want to make sure that people actually get well at the end, we can't stop at the, here's a medication, you're on your own, which is what happens in the real world. So we took this whole notion of a doctor discharge note, which is long and cumbersome, written in MedSpeak, nobody reads it, lots of you know, like disclaimers, uh, and we boiled it down to a checklist that is very easy two to seven action items written in consumer language, very easy to follow and understand. The doctor prescribes a duration and a frequency for each and every one of the check items, and then HealthUp takes over and sends push notifications or email or text messages to remind you to do what you need to do, that it can go to your uh, phone, it can go to your email, or it can go to your watch, uh, and, and get these uh, reminders to do what you do, attached to a tip created, or a couple of tips created by doctors that, have, that are filtered by your health graph and personalized to what you're managing, so people don't get desensitized. Right? The, the, the notification, by the way, comes from the doctors, not from HealthTap, and we discovered that people tend to adhere more when they get reminders from the doctor and when it's attached every time to a different set of uh, tidbits of information that become interesting. So you don't get desensitized to the reminders. So from information to consultation to engagement, the first end-to-end -end experience in healthcare. Great. So, um, so speaking about data, so um, you basically gather a lot of data about every person, right? So uh, help us understand, so this is the world of EMRs uh, that has your history and, and this history that you have your, with your doctor, this is yet another history. What, how do you think about this and how do you protect it? How do you, and what things do you do once you have my data? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, like, I think that we, we try to keep it in context. So first of all, patients on HealthTap are always anonymous. Right, so you never see who the patient is. When you ask it, uh, doctors are not. Doctors are very visible, right? You see who the doctor is answering the question, their credential. Each and every one of them has a virtual practice. You can see where they practice. You can contact them, so it's very transparent. On the patient side, nothing. You cannot see any other patients on HealthTap. It's all completely private and encrypted. Uh, the other thing that is very important is that we are doing things in context. So when you ask a question on HealthTap, we will ask you to add uh, three attributes. We're using our knowledge base and some machine learning techniques to actually try to attach to your question some related data points that will help the doctor give you a more personalized answer. And why is that important? Because if uh, a 26-year-old woman with, uh, that, that is pregnant is asking what are the potential implications of diabetes and she has no, no uh, other conditions, she's taking no medication, and the same question exactly is asked by a 76-year-old guy with three comorbidities taking four medications, the same semantic question will get a very different answer, right? So adding these attributes to the question and tagging the question and the answer, because the doctor sees the question with the attributes, uh, tagging it not only semantically, but do some attribute-based tagging makes it much more easy for us to personalize the answer to the next person that comes in, has the same kind of characteristics, and now we're matching not only semantically, but we're matching it to a, an answer that will give to a person like you, right? So it's very, very, valuable, right? So that's trusting machine learning quite a bit. Is there one level of, of review um, after that? Uh, because you, you obviously want to make sure that, uh, considering how high stakes that is, you want to give the right answer to the right Always, 100% of health up, all answers, tips, news, app reviews are created by doctors and reviewed by other doctors. So the machine doesn't make decisions, right? So what we are doing is helping the patient ask their, provide the right points of data that then go to the doctor that answer the question in context, right? But we don't let the machine make decisions. We actually make the doctors provide the answers. So those are the suggestions when you route the right answer to the right person. Those are just suggestions, and then the, the physicians makes the call? Yeah. 
think about the world as our QA system, as a QA team, like an extended QA team. That by, you know, from the time we started this talk, probably we had like several thousand QA folks that uh, went to our database, asked a question. We served them with a bunch of existing answers that were given to people like them. They were looking around and said, oh, yeah, this is what I'm looking for. Thank you very much. I'm going away. Or, you know what? I'm asking a question about this. And by the way, I also have a scratch in my elbow. I'm not sure it's related, but I don't see it in your database. I'll ask the question, push it to doctors. After a few seconds, you get a few more answers. And they expanded the database to a place that it wasn't before. So we're very, going very, very deep into the long tail. We're going very, very deep into attribute-based matching. Because even if that question was answered before many times, maybe it was not answered to a person like you. And then we can basically create the world's largest knowledge base of doctor's wisdom, basically, by far. Fascinating. And, and, and I read somewhere that you guys had a project, I don't know if it became a product, uh, but that was uh, Talk to Doc. Was it like almost like a Siri for, uh, for, for, for to, to, to use NLP basically to, to query the database? Is that sure. by voice? Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, look, the, 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 mission, the mission that we have now, now that, now that we have all this data and all this knowledge base uh, and the ability to really understand people is to give people the right care at the right time at the right place, at the right cost, right? And the ability to create this triaging system, an amazing triaging system that allows someone to come to HealthTap, right, and ask a question. And if the knowledge base has already the answer that was given to a person like you, you can use it there, right, and you're done. And if that's not enough, we allow you to actually ask a quick text question and find one of 66,000 physicians or several of them to answer the question quickly. And if that's not enough, we'll put you in front of a, a doctor who's available now, and you can have a text chat conversation with them, maybe attach a picture of a rash or whatever it is, and have a, a conversation with them back and forth. If that's not enough, we'll put you in front of a video conversation, an HD video conversation with a doctor. And if that's not enough, we'll put you in front of a doctor in the real world, but armed with all the data. So we put you in front of the right doctor, not in front of a glorified uh, primary care triager for 200 bucks, right? Because we know where to put you, right? In front of the right doctor. And if that's not enough, we put you in the ER, but you know, 74% of people that go to ERs at night don't need to be there. So is there a better way to triage them using data? And this is exactly what we're working on. We're positioned really well to do that. So how far do you think that that whole trend goes? You and I were talking about this, like this, this Vinod Kosla quote I like, um, which says, uh, Mobile devices, big data, and artificial intelligence will disrupt healthcare. I believe it is inevitable that the majority of physicians' diagnostic and prescription work uh, will be replaced with smart hardware and software, and healthcare will become better, more consistent across physicians, and more scientific. The remaining 20% of physicians' work will be amplified, giving them better capability. Just yeah. curious on your thoughts. No, uh, so Vinod is one of our investors, so just a disclaimer. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I, I, I think that uh, to, to actually make the point uh, even sharper, I think that in the, in the foreseeable future, we will see doctors becoming more and more data scientists, right? So what I'm very excited about is seeing all this data that comes in right now. So any doctors in the room, by the way? One, two, yo. So doctor, you're familiar with the SOAP methodology, right? Sub, so, SOAP, S-O-A-P, right? You remember the acronym? Yeah, subjective, objective, assessment, and plan. I think that we pretty much nailed in digital channels the subjective, which is basically subjective is when you come to a doctor and say, oh, you know, I had this pain in my hand. It lasted for, it's been going for about two weeks, and it's kind of blue. And they have a conversation with the doctor, and it's, this is the subjective. The objective is the data, right? It's the data the doctor takes either from a lab test, you know, from one of these tests that we discussed before, or can come from a wearable device or from wherever the doctor finds data, and helps together with the subjective to create an assessment, right? It's based on the addition of the two, and then a plan. And what you're alluding to is the ability to add a lot more into the objective that now it's kind of sort of, you know, it's very frictious and very poor in terms of like what doctors can see, particularly if you go to the doctor that you've seen for the first time. We can add a lot more data there to empower the doctors to make better assessment and inevitably better plans, particularly if it's connected back to the subjective that can refine it again and again and again. Now, this is where it becomes interesting, right? So our role is to bring the data in front of the doctor and rather than have them drown in this data, bubble up the kind of data in context, back to what, what Vinod is saying, and empower them to make better decisions because they have more data and they didn't drown in it. 
So then we're actually using data and machine learning and all these amazing techniques to create very powerful decision support systems for doctors, right, to make better, faster decisions so they can, get, they can actually focus on the things that are more difficult rather than on these like mundane things that they're spending 90% of their time right now. So I think it's a huge opportunity to actually, it's not whether we will have only machines in the futures or we will have only doctors in the futures. I think it's the combination of the two that will help our doctors to become better data scientists and focus on the more difficult problems like the inspiring thing that we were talking before about, like really focusing on that and give them the right data at the right time to help make better decisions. It's what's really exciting about the next era. And we're working on interfaces now, which is very cool, that will bring in front of doctors when they're making decisions digitally, the, the data in context. Because we believe that with all these wearables and all these devices and all this data that's coming together right now, if we don't find a way to show it to doctors in context in a succinct way, they're going to recoil because there's too much for them to deal with. So our role is to create simple interfaces for them that will bubble up the right data and help them make better decisions for people that they're seeing digitally. So there's, I mean, there's some history of that, right, of evidence-based uh, medicine, decision support systems, all of the things, um, and hasn't quite worked in the past largely because uh, doctors rejected it. Do, do you think we have that tipping point where, where doctors are, are ready to think of themselves so almost as data scientists, as you were saying? Yeah, and I think that, you know, you said that it's also about entrepreneurship. And I, I always said if, if I had a dime for every person that told me that doctors will never answer patients' questions online for free, I wouldn't need to raise money for this company ever. <laughs> uh, and we did raise money. Uh, 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 doctors need, we need, we work, we're working with doctors from day one to create the best interfaces and things that are like, experiences that are very, very easy for doctors to interact with. We put, I mean, we have 64 people at HealthUp right now. The all, almost all of them are engineers, designers, data scientists, doctors that are building actually interfaces that make it a lot of fun and easy for doctors to provide care for their patients or for other patients in digital channels. Nobody spent enough time before right, and enough energy to think about the doctor experience as well. And not only that, create a great user experience, right, that will bring people to interact with doctors and their knowledge using digital channels from phones, right, from, uh, from tablets, from the web, also from wearables right now, right, and create this amazing marketplace where people are empowered to find better information and better access to care, but doctors are empowered to provide care in a way that it's easy for them. Because I think that what happened before, which is what you're alluding to, like they were drowning in too much data, and then who has time to deal with that? Versus really how much we're thinking now, we're spending a tremendous amount of time to make it easy, not only for users, but for doctors as well. Great, uh, I want to open to some questions. Uh, somebody in the back, actually, the, the lady over there, all the way. Sorry to make you run. Actually, not sorry, I like it. <laughs> okay, question is, uh, how are you gonna make money? <laughs> okay, so here's how we're not making money. How's that? Uh, Health Up, Health Up could have been profitable more than a year ago by serving ads on the pages, which was everyone, when we were on University Avenue in Palo Alto and, and everyone around us is doing ads, right? So it's like the easiest thing in the world, turn it on, make a few tens of millions of dollars a year and all, ev life is good. Serve ads to patients, ads to doctors, I mean, it's all, it's like fantastic. Uh, we're not doing any of that, right? Uh, instead of that, we believe that there's a way to provide the right level, the right kind of care at the right time, at the right cost to people and they will value it enough to pay for it. I know it's a new concept, right? And whether they pay for it alone or, they pay, or their payer, they payers eventually will decide to pay for it because people will demand it. If you create the right kind of access to people, they will pay for it, right? So how is a customer uh, in healthcare called? How do you call a customer in healthcare? Patient. patient. patient? When you didn't feel well last time, were you patient? I think you were impatient. And I think that one thing that people pay for in healthcare, right, uh, is immediate gratification. Because when we are in pain, the last thing that we are is patient. You know, like healthcare is the, it's only second to the DMV in our expectation that we have a waiting room. <laughs> Why do we have a waiting room in healthcare? Why do we not expect to have waiting room at, at, at the cinema or where we go and buy stuff? 
right? It's, serv it's a service. We know in healthcare, we need to have a patient. Uh, sorry, we need to have a waiting room. Why? Because the, we used to the fact that there's a scarce resource there. And I think that we can use technology today to actually take advantage of the, of the fact that we can do things much more efficiently, right? And reduce the time that people wait for and create for them immediate gratification at the moment that they're in pain, in real physical pain. And people will pay for that. And eventually payers will pay for that too, which is a much better way. So we have premium services. We have HealthTap Prime. You can come to HealthTap and sign up on, on HealthTap today. It costs $99 a month. And you can actually get free immediate access to doctors, unlimited, anytime, anywhere from any mobile design of, sorry, mobile device or web connection by a push of a button in like three seconds. And that's unlimited. So that costs $99 a month. It costs health, it's called HealthTap Prime. We also have another product that we, we allow you to actually find your doctor or find another doctor on HealthTap and invite them and we provide them the ability to provide virtual care to you directly on our platform. So if you have a relationship with a doctor and you want to invite them to HealthTap, they get a license to the platform and they can provide to you care on our platform and charge $44 for every interaction that you have with them. And you get access, you can schedule a virtual appointment, you can send them a text message quickly and ask a question and you get immediate care, right? So for this, people are paying. We're growing very, very rapidly right now in these channels without doing any advertising. And it's very, very exciting. And more, also, like in, as of recent, and we have not tried to do it ourselves because, again, we have mostly engineers, product people, designers, and data people, but we start getting inbound interest from some of the largest healthcare institutions, the most reputable ones. And what, that's part of my reason of visiting New York here is to have one of these discussions because they approached us to build for them the platform for providing virtual care to their own patients based on our HealthTap concierge service, which is software as a service, and I encourage you to, take, to check it out. It's on healthtap.com. You can read about it. These larger institutions are coming to us right now to build a foundation for virtual care for them to serve their own populations. Great. Time for one last question. It's always been these people so far. I'm a left side equal opportunity. Hi, uh, Aaron Franco, CT of ClickSlide. Um, what um, you mentioned that you're providing uh, better contextual data to the doctors so they can make better decisions about their patients. Um, what wearable uh, devices do you have integrated? And if you don't have wearables integrated, why not? It's an awesome question. Uh, how do I answer it? Um, so first of all, this whole notion of giving the right data to doctors so, so they can provide the right care at the right time, at the right place, at the right cost. Uh, is based on not only data that comes from external sources like a lab or like a wearable, but also uh, data that is, so this is explicit data, but it's also implicit data. So what happens today if you're not feeling well and you go online and you go to a search engine and look for some information and go to a website? Where does your, so you browse around, right? You start reading about stuff. Where does this data go? Where does it go? To Google, to Google and to any other website that you went to, what do they use the data for? Sell you toasters or drugs you don't need, right? What if instead we took this data and provided it to doctors for context? For the doctor in the room, you know, sometimes patients come and complain about pain, but what they really are talking about is depression. And if you had some context about where they're coming from, you would not look for the source of pain, you would look for why they're depressed. So having contextual data for the doctors when they serve you and the objective is not just what's coming from wearable or from some of the amazing diagnostic texts like we learned before, but it's what comes from your browsing history, right? For what you're looking for, your behaviors, what comes also from your engagement. So if we are connecting with wearables, and I can't comment on it yet, unfortunately, but let's assume hypothetically uh, that we are connecting with some wearables. Uh, if the doctor sends you to use a wearable, right, and the data connects back and the doctor can actually see it, it becomes very valuable in the ability to actually figure out what you're doing and not doing. So maybe you're not taking the medication that you're, you're, you're supposed to take. And, you know, people are kind of embarrassed. They're supposed to do something. They're not doing it. But the data will help the doctor to say maybe we need to pursue a different course of action because this is for some reason not working for you. So being integrated end-to-end -end from the moment you're browsing for content which actually collects implicitly data, right, and use it to empower doctors rather than sell you toasters, 
And also for these wearable data that now maybe shows you beautiful graphs that you get desensitized after 30 days, but instead of that, like feeding it back to someone that understands it in context, give the, doc give the doctor the ability to take the subjective, add it to the objective, and create for you the right assessment and plans that can actually be improved and improved over time. And the beautiful thing, and there are a lot of data people in the room, if there are enough people are doing it and again and again and again, obviously we can start seeing patterns, right? And can start putting the right care to the right people at the right time at the right cost. But even more than that, and this is the holy grail in my mind, is the place when you start becoming predictive. Right? When people are starting to use it on an ongoing basis, you start to be able to actually help them before they even know they have a problem. And that's super exciting. Great. On that note, that's uh, all the time we have, but you're going to be around after this, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And I'm right. at, also Ron Gutman at HealthTap, first, last HealthTap. If you want to email me anytime, do it. No problem. Can you ask a medical question? <laughs> <laughs> I want to leave some time for other people, but I, I'm happy to answer. I'm happy to, to, to spend some time with you after the, the session. Okay? Right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Awesome.